Now, so far we have focused on the market system. But this system is actually only one half of the global economic paradigm. The other half is the monetary system. While the market system deals with the interaction of people gaming for profit across the spectrum of labor, production and distribution, the monetary system is an underlying set of policies set by financial institutions which create conditions for the market system, among other things. It includes terms we often hear, such as interest rates, loans, debt, the money supply, inflation, etc. And while you might want to pull your hair out listening to the gibberish coming from the monetary economists, modest preemptive actions can obviate the need of more drastic actions at a later date. The nature and effect of this system is actually quite simple. Our economy has, or the global economy, has three basic things a governor. One is fractional reserve banking, but banks printing money out of nothing. It's also based upon compound interest. When you borrow money, you have to pay back more than you borrowed, which means that you, in effect, create money out of thin air, again, which has to be serviced by creating still more money. We live in an infinite growth paradigm. The economic uh, paradigm we live in now is, is a Ponzi scheme. It's n nothing grows forever. It's not possible. As a great uh, psychologist, James Hillman, wrote, the only thing that grows in a human body after a certain age is cancer. It's not just the amount of money that has to keep growing, it's the amount of consumers. Consumers to borrow money at interest to generate more money, and obviously that's not possible on a finite planet. People are basically vehicles to just create money, which must create more money to keep the whole thing from falling apart, which is what's happening right now. There are really only two things anyone needs to know about the monetary system. One, all money is created out of debt. Money is monetized debt, whether it materialized from treasury bonds, home loan contracts, or credit cards. In other words, if all outstanding debt was to be repaid right now, there would not be one dollar in circulation. And two, interest is charged on virtually all loans made and the money needed to pay back this interest does not exist in the money supply outright. Only the principal is created by the loans, and the principal is the money supply. So, if all this debt was to be repaid right now, not only would there not be one dollar left in circulation, there would also be a gigantic amount of money owed that is literally impossible to pay back for it does not exist. The consequence of all of this is that two things are inevitable. Inflation and bankruptcy. As far as inflation, this can be seen as an historical trend in virtually every country today, and easily tied to its cause, which is the perpetual increase of the money supply, which is required to cover the interest charges and keep the system going. As far as bankruptcy, it comes in the form of debt collapse. This collapse will inevitably occur with a person, a business, or a country, and typically happens when the interest payments are no longer possible to make. But there is a bright side to all of this. Well, at least in terms of the market system. Because debt creates pressure. Debt creates wage slaves. A person in debt is much more likely to take a low wage than a person who isn't, hence becoming a cheap commodity. So it's great for the corporations to have a pool of people that have no financial mobility. But hey, that same train of thought also goes for entire countries. The World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, which mostly serve as proxies for transnational corporate interests, give gigantic loans to troubled countries at very high interest rates. And then, once the countries are deeply in the hole and can't pay, Austerity measures are applied, the corporations swoop in, set up sweatshops, and take their natural resources. Now that's market efficiency. But wait, there's more. You see, there's this unique hybrid of the monetary and market system called the stock market, which rather than, you know, actually produce anything real, they just buy and sell money itself. And when it comes to debt, you know what they do? That's right. They trade it. They actually buy and sell debt for profit. From credit default swaps and collateralized debt obligations for consumer debt, 
to complex derivative schemes used to mask the debt of entire countries, such as the collusion of investment bank Goldman Sachs in Greece, which nearly collapsed the entire European economy. So when it comes to the stock market and Wall Street, we have an entirely new level of insanity born out of the money sequence of value.